The Zack Files, Sarada Madison Cabinet by Dan Greenberg. Chapter 5. I was in a panic. At this very minute, Zack was pretending to be me. He was getting ready to leave with my dad for the Yankee training camp in Florida. I heard a knock at the bathroom door. Zack, did you hear me? Are you ready? Says his father's voice. I held my breath. He opened he, the door open. Zig's father came into the bathroom. Just then, I sneezed. Achoo! Zig, are you in the shower? No, sir, I said. The blinds were pulled up. There stood the dad, who looked almost exactly like mine. At first, I was scared he might be mad. That, but then, he began to laugh. What are you doing in the shower with your clothes on? He asked. Resting, I said. There's no time for resting, Zeke. Our cab is coming in about half an hour. Have you got your retainer? Are you all packed? Pretty much, I said. He looked at me oddly as he frowned. You look a little different, son. Did you comb your hair a new way this morning? Yes, sir, I did. That's exactly what I did. Mm, uh huh, okay. Well, I still have a few things to do, Zig. Could you run to the dry cleaners quickly and pick up all our cleaning? The cleaners? The only place I wanted to go was back through the medicine cabinet. But what could I say? Uh, sh sure, I stammered. What cleaners would that be again? You know, the one across the street and down the block. Uh-huh, and what block would that be again? He looked at me and raised an eyebrow. Come on, he said. You've gone there lots of times. Just get going. We have to leave soon. Okay, I said. He handed me a receipt and a $20 bill. Then he walked out of the bathroom. The $20 bill looked strange. It was enormous. And when I examined it closely, I saw that along the top it said the United States of America. The picture of all the $20 bills I seen is of under Jackson. This one was on somebody with bushy hair, a beard, and no glasses. His name was Slappy Copperman. I left the apartment and went down in the elevator. Then I got outside. I wanted to get to the cleaners and back as fast as I could. At the corner, I waited for traffic to stop. It was taking forever. Then I looked up at the traffic sign signal and I saw why. Instead of the red and the green light, there were four lights. The light says stop, not yet, hold on, and okay, go already. New, New, New York sure was a weird place. A big billboard to my right said, we love New York, just as good as New York, maybe better. Well, I didn't think so. I wanted to go back to my own universe. I did manage to find the cleaners. I got six dad's clothes, then I beat it out of there. I went back down the block, but I must have got a mess up somehow because when I got to the corner, the big builder board should have been to my left, but it wasn't there at all. I took a quick look around. Nothing looked familiar. Then I saw a big apartment building across the street. It had a fancy can no, canopy. It looked a whole lot like one in my own neighborhood in my own universe. The big man arms plus the apartment. I thought maybe the doorman could help me find my way back to Zix. The problem was I didn't know, even know Zix's stupid address. All I knew was that I would probably be like Mike. 
only a little different. I ran to the building, but there wasn't any door. Right. In fact, there wasn't even any building. What I saw was a building was an only a fake front, like a movie set. The vi- but the bushes in front of it were made of green plastic. There was a tag on them. It said, "Realistic bushes, last longer, need less care, better than real." I gulped. I felt like I was in a dream. One of those really awful ones, where no matter how hard you try to get someplace, you can't. And then you poop. In the middle of the street, I saw an open manhole. There was po- police barricades around it. Signs said "Danger on opening days." Falling in would be stupid. Also painful. Did we mention illegal? Hey, this could be another way to get back to my universe. If I couldn't find my way. Back to Zix and go through the medicine cabinet. Maybe I could climb through there. Going through the sewers could would be pretty gross, of course. But I didn't care. At least I come out on the right side. I waited for the traffic light to change. Again, it took forever. Then I raced off to the manhole. Now was the time to make my move. But just as I stood down. I felt a heavy hand on my shoulder. I looked up. A big policeman was standing over me. He seemed kind of scary, but then I looked at the gun in his holster. It was a super soaker. You won't want to get too close and fall into New York, he said. Now, would you, Sonny? Oh, boy, sir! I sure wouldn't want to do that. I said. We both laughed pretty hard at the idea. I. Want to do anything as stupid as fall into New York? Well then, step away from there," he said. I did. He stayed right next to the manhole. I don't think he trusts me, but with his super soaker, he didn't seem so scary anymore. I decided to ask his help. Um, officer, I said, I'm kind of lost. I was on my way home, but I must have taken a wrong turn or something. What's your address, son? He asked. My address? Yes. Ah,、uh, well, I'm not exactly sure. I said. I mean, it seems to have temporarily slipped my mind. Your address has slipped your mind? Temporarily. He looked at me strangely, but he listened while I described Zeke's building. Oh, I know the one you mean. He said. I'll take you there. He took me by the hand. Then he led me down the block and around the corner. There it was, Zig's building. I think him all over the place, and then I took off. He was probably glad to get rid of me. Right in front of Zig's building was a new step.、Uh, it was just like the one in front of my own building. On the front page of all the newspapers were big headlines: "Danger! Opening day arrives. Cities warned not to take chances." Danger? What danger? I picked out a paper and started to read. Today, in the early hours in the morning, cities of New York will once again be able to peek through any of several openings and actually observe life in our sister universe. Do not admit to cross over into the alternate universe," warns po- Professor Rudolf Benzer at the New York Institute of Parallel Universe. The opening should appear somewhere in the vicinity of 6 a.m. They will then shut down time again approximately two hours later. One shot. They will not report for as many as thirty years. Thirty years will be one heck of a long time to spend in a universe that re- remembered to be better than ours, but isn't. I look at my watch. Yikes! It was seven forty-five a.m. I had just fifteen minutes before the cab came. The Zig left for Florida with my dad. At 
before the doors to my universe slam shut for 30 years. I raced into Zeke's building. Chapter 6. I arrived back in Zeke's apartment out of press. I threw up Zeke's dad cleaning in the hallway. I ran into the bathroom. I pushed hard against the back of the medicine cabinet, but I couldn't make the darn thing budge. Zeke obviously knew more about traveling between universe than I did. And then I heard somebody behind me. I whirled around to find Zeke's dad looking at me strangely. Zeke, he said, what are you doing? Should I tell him the truth? Could I trust him? Or was he the enemy? I didn't know. But this time was running out. And I didn't see that I had much choice. Listen, sir, I said. This is going to sound sort of incredible, but it's the truth. So help me. Over Zeke, he said, but make it fast. We have less than 15 minutes before the cab comes. Okay, I said. First of all, I'm not your son, Zeke. I'm somebody else who looks lo just like him. And my name is Zeke. I live in a purple uniform. My dad and I were getting ready to the Yankees training camp, just like you and Zeke were getting ready to the Yankees. Yankees training camp. Only I dropped my retainer through the medicine cabinet. I lost it. The same as Zach lost it. His. Zach's dad's mouth dropped open. He smacked his forehead with his head. I can't believe it, he said. It's true. Though, sir, I said, I swear. Zach has lost his retainer, he said in a dazed voice. That's the tenth or so far this year. Wow, Zeke was even worse than me. Do you know how much those things cost? He said, either $1,200 or $112, I said quickly. But didn't you hear, hear the other stuff I told you? Yes, 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 of course I did. He said, your name is Zach. You live in a parallel universe on the other side of the medicine cabinet, blah, blah, blah. You don't believe me. Do you? I said. Why shouldn't I believe you? He said. Everybody in New York knows about your universe. It's not like it's a big secret or anything. And it isn't any better than ours either, by the way. Boy, this was a touch of subject with disguise. I never said it was better, I said. Look, sir, you seem to know a lot of a lot about parallel universe. So maybe you know how to slip back through the medicine cabinet to Mike, like Zig did just now. Zig, he crossed over? I nodded. I really have Zig's dad's attention now. But it's almost 50. Zig's dad smacked his forehead again. At 8 o'clock, opening day will shut down completely. My point exactly, sir, I said. I'd be miserable if that happened. Not that I wouldn't love living here, I mean, because I think it's at least as good as my universe. Maybe, and maybe even better. But the thing is, I really miss my mom and dad. Okay, okay, said Zig said. This is what you have to do. Put your head on the back wall of the medicine cabinet. I did. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, now visualize the back wall opening. Let me know if you feel anything. I did everything, he said. It started to work. The wall was starting to feel kind of springy. I opened my eyes in time to see it sort of melt away. Chapter 7 Hi, Zach, said a familiar face. Zig, said Zig's dad. Oh, thank heavens. Zip, I said. Were you coming back? I, he looked embarrassed. I got homesick, he said. I mean, your dad is awfully nice, Zach. He really is, but he's not my dad. And this isn't my universe. I figured you must feel the same way. Even though New York is just as cool as New York. My dad appeared on the other side of the medicine cabinet. Dad, I said. Hi, Zach, said the, my dad. He and then he turned to Zig said, Hi, Don, he said, long time no see. Hi, Dan, he 
besides that, Vic said to my dad, Face your hands through the medicine cabinet. You two know each other? I asked amazed. Yeah, we met when we were your age, said Vic said. But it wasn't through a medicine cabinet, it was through a dryer in the laundromat. Yeah, said my dad. I always wonder what happened to odd socks that got lost in the laundry. Who'd have guessed they go to the parallel universe? That was quite an opening day, said Vic said. Not much wonder it got dry. But we were we sure had fun. Your dad thought I live in the dryer. Both my dad and Vic said started laughing their heads off. Uh, excuse me for interrupting, I said. This is all very interesting, but it's now 7.55. Oh, right, right, said Vic said. He looked through the cabinet and said, do you still want to go to the young kids training camp zone? I sure do, said Zig. Then let me pull you through, said Zig step. So Zig crawled back into his own universe. I crawled back into mine. I'm sorry, Zach, said Zig. I was a real jerk. Y you were, I said, but I forgive you. Cap horns were now honking on both sides of the cabinet. Well, so long, guys, I said. See you again sometime, said Zig. Maybe at the next opening day, I said. Okay, said Zig. He fished something out of his pocket. He handed it to me through the cabinet. It was my retainer. You swiped my retainer, I said. He nodded shiftily. But I couldn't keep it, he said, because you know it was wrong. Yeah, he said. Also, it didn't fit. Then all of a sudden, the friends father clock in our hallway started chiming. It was 8 o'clock. We waved goodbye to each other. Then, instead of fencing Zig, and he said, I was looking at shows with toothpaste and dodorant. I pushed hard against the back wall of the medicine cabinet. I visualized like crazy, but nothing happened. So that's how I discovered the parallel universe. And every time I open my medicine cabinet, I think of Zig and his dad. I kind of miss them. It's funny to think that they're so close and yet so far away. The time, the next time I see Zig, I could have a son of my own. Weird. I wonder what he'll be like. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if he's just like me in every way except one? I hope he doesn't ever need to wear a retainer. The end of chapter 5 to chapter 7.